It's not over. Stop the fight! No! People! Everybody, everybody, I come here for everybody! Kill everybody! I'm the champ, I'm the king, kill everybody! Ah! Alright, what's up y'all? We're back with our Volkov, Jarzinho, Rosenstrike picks. What's up, Carson? How we doing? Good to be back, good to be back. It's kind of boring with a, with a week off, so we're trying to get these out sure. early. But yeah, let's uh, let's get into it. Alright, for the first fight of the night, we have Damon Jackson versus Daniel Arguleta. Um, what stands out to me in this fight is experience. Damon Jackson uh, recently just came off a win. He's had a lot of fights, especially in the UFC. Um... Uh, and Ar- Ar- Ted, Ar- I can't say that fucking name. Daniel, um, he was on Dana White's Contender Series. He fought Ricky Tercio, so he lost that fight. Actually, he put up a decent performance. He's all around pretty decent. Um, can do the ground game, can do the whole shebang. I just think Damon Jackson um, will be better on the feet, better on the ground, um, and control the fight. So for that, we're going to do... Damon Jackson by decision. I know a lot of people are picking the submission for this one. I just think Daniel might be able to defend all that. Um, we'll see. He hasn't lost by sub yet. Um, and we'll uh, hopefully... I think Damon's going to be a giant favorite when the line's released. But uh, yeah. Also, uh, looking at the last weigh-in, um, this is at 145, and Daniel was at 135 at his latest weight. So that's also a step up in size. So Damon Jackson by decision. All right, the next fight we have is Tony Gravely versus Johnny Munoz Jr. Um, who do you like in this one? Uh, probably lean toward Gravely by decision. But that's it's a, a tough matchup to call. Yeah, I think we got a lot of these on this card where they're just like uh, very close lines for one. And then stylistically, it's very hard to call these. If you're looking at Munoz, he's got um, a really good ground game. I think he's got um, championship stuff from jiu-jitsu. And uh, his stand-up, though, is very, very basic. If I had to compare it, I'd compare it to Jordan Levitt. Um So in my mind, I think Gravely won't take this fight to the ground. I mean, would you, as a wrestler, take the fight to the ground with a jiu-jitsu champion? No. Uh, Probably not. When Munoz's uh, stand-up is so bad. And Gravely's been submitted before is kind of a hard thing with this fight. And he's got a gas tank that wears down. Um, Obviously, he's got the... uh, uh, Minos has got the height and a reach advantage, I believe, yep, by two inches. So, you know, this is kind of a scary fight to pitch. Hopefully, Gravely can keep his gas tank on and keep it a stand up fight and win there. But, uh, we're going to go Gravely by decision. Alright, next fight we have is Joe Selecki versus Alex Da Silva. Very close fight to call. I mean, this, this is why I think this card is a lot of good fights. Because these are hard to call. Um, Alex Da Silva, you know, he put up a really good fight actually against Brad Riddell a while ago. He's getting older as well. Both these guys are young. Um, Joel Selecki obviously has a really good jiu-jitsu game. Wins most of his fights by submission. But Jared Gordon really isn't that great. I know he's a good wrestler, but that's somebody who... I think there was a robbery in that fight, as in um, Slecky should have gotten two rounds easily. But, um, you know, what stands out to me, I think, is that Silva's going to have the better stand-up in this in this fight. He's going to have to control it. Um, and if there's going to be somebody who's going to be taking down the other person, I think he's going to be taking down Joe Slecky. And top control means a lot to the judges. So I really like um, Alex Da Silva, and uh, I like this fight going over two and a half rounds. Um, there's also great value in Da Silva in this fight. 
think he's like plus 190, something like right, plus 170 right now. Pretty good number. Um, but yeah, for a guy, I mean, his loss to Riddell, it's, Riddell's also was ranked a little bit ago, and uh, getting caught in a guillotine choke is not something shocking. Maybe, maybe Selecti will do it to him. A lot of this, I think, is very similar to that Johnny Munoz fight we saw earlier versus Tony Dravely. Um, it's just whether De Silva can kind of avoid the submissions and cruise his way to a decision. So, uh, I'm going to go with Alex, Sil- uh, Alex De Silva. Just a very close fight. Maybe a split decision. All right, our next fight we have up is Benoit St. Dennis versus Nicholas Stoltz. Um, what do you like about Benoit versus uh, Nicholas? Nicholas Benoit, he's uh, yeah, he's only 26 years old and is uh, showing a lot of promise with his strong ground game. Yeah, I mean, and uh, he's re- recently coming off of a loss, but I think he'll get back on track. Well, that was against uh, uh, I don't know how to say his name completely. Elise Z- Zaletti Dos Santos. He's like a really accomplished striker. And I think he took that fight on short notice. Um, he did get his ass beat in that, but he had a decent first round. On the Stoltz side, um, man, I remember watching this fight where he got knocked out by Jared Gooden, and Jared Gooden sucks. He's, he's powerful, but he's not good. Um, and Meave, he's all right, but not much to go home about. Right. Um, I don't think either of these guys have a UFC win. Um, so maybe it'd be on the verge of getting cut for Nicholas. But yeah, I think Benoit's going to have slightly better ground game. This is one of those fights. I know I probably say this for every fight. Whoever has the better cardio probably will win in a way. And if Benoit gets tired after round one, Stoltz could take over. But yeah, I I like I like uh, Benoit St. Dennis. And I like him by decision. I think this is going to be a over two and a half fight. Because Stoltz has never been submitted, and uh, St. Dennis will probably not, not have the knockout power, and neither will Stoltz. So. St. Dennis has never gone to a decision before, or won a decision. In his last fight, he went to a decision and lost. It's the UFC, though. Yeah. I don't know. I'll try it. Maybe I'll have to rethink it later, but for now, St. Dennis by decision. Um, all right, our next fight, we have Aaron Blanchfield versus... J.J. Aldridge, um, I think I know your pick, Carson. Uh, yeah. J.J. Hey. Aldridge. <laughs> she looks like that Irish woman that was at the casino <laughs> that one night, but... Um, anyway, why do you like Aaron Blanchfield? Yeah, she's, she's super young. She's only 23 years old, and she looked uh, really impressive in her last fight against Miranda Ra- Maverick. Yeah, I think overall, well, she was an underdog going into the fight. I think I bet her, um, like, half a unit. But um, I think what stands out to me is, like, the difference in wrestling. Like, Aaron Blanchfield does, like, hip throws and stuff that are, like, you know, it's not easy to learn. And it's, like, uh, you know, something you kind of are skilled at, whereas J.J. Aldridge kind of just puts people up against the fence and does cardio type like wrestling um you know it's not absurd to say jj aldridge could win this fight but um i think just from skilled wrestling wise i'd pick blanchfield and i mean i don't see this fight going to a to be finished unless blanchfield does a macy barber and just screams a lot and starts hitting uh aldridge a bunch but you like uh, Blanchfield by decision as well? Yeah, for sure. All right, we'll stick with it. All right, with our next fight, we have Andreas Michelitis versus Renat. I don't even want to try that last name. Um, who do you got? Yeah, we're going with the Russian. Because of superior wrestling, mostly, probably? Yeah, for sure. I think, uh, although Andre Michalides didn't look terrible against uh, Alex Pereira, yeah, he got him down. Now, I don't know how you know much we give credit to him for getting him down, but he did get him down. Yeah. Um, 
the thing that stands out to me of this fight is just don't bet it. Um, man, I've watched some of Renat's fights, and he fights a lot of garbage stands. And uh, he also just, he seems to get people to the ground, and then he's winded when he's on the ground. I saw a ref stop a fight when he was putting pillow punches on some dude, and I just... I just don't want to touch this one. And I'm I, I'm surprised the line a little bit. Um, Michaldus doesn't seem very great anywhere. Um, I don't know what, what else to think with this one. I, maybe a finish? I don't know what to think. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure about that, but it it is uh, Renat's first fight in UFC, so take that for what it's worth I think we're just going to go we'll just go with decision because um, you know Renat might get himself tired or he might be able to get less strikes off against a more competitive opponent but uh, yeah I'm not too interested in this one I don't like to bet a lot of these new people that are in the UFC when you haven't seen their full talent yet so Uh, alright next alright next fight we have is Ode Osborne versus Zarkush Adeshev. Um, we're both on the same guy, right? The Milwaukee man. Milwaukee baby. Yeah. What stands out to me is the uh, speed advantage Ode has. I don't know how much you watched before this, but we've seen Ode before. It's really quick. Yeah, and beat uh, CJ Vergara, and we saw what. He did against Rodriguez in his last fight. Although we think he lost. Yeah, well, a good fight. what happened in Ode's fight against CJ Vergara, too, is that Ode took the two first rounds pretty easily, and then Vergara caught Ode a little bit more tired in the third round. Um, so that's kind of a downside to Ode, is he gets a little more tired because he's, he's fast twitch. Um, Zartouche, on the other hand, he's very... Uh, he likes to throw way more hooks and like kicks, and he can also mix in wrestling. But Ode has that wrestling background. But with the the height and reach disadvantage, I just think the straight punches would be able to win in the hooks battle. But uh, Ode's striking defense is not that good. I mean his his hands sit really like um, in awkward positions to even defend him. Like his his uh. Fists don't protect his chin a lot of the time. It's kind of something that scares you, especially with a guy who throws a lot of hooks. But yeah, if I were, if we were to pick this, we'd have to say decision, right? Yeah, for sure. I think Ode is more of a decision machine. Um, and Akashev, you know, don't Akashev don't mess up that record. I mean, he actually has had some decent opponents, so uh, should be an interesting fight. Next fight we have is Jeff Molina versus Zalgas Zumadulov. Uh, we're both on the same guy. Why do you like Molina? Yeah, I, I just like his output, and he's on a he hasn't lost in the UFC so far. So I think he'll continue that. And he's and a young fighter. Zumadulov is not not very good. He's lost three of his four fights in the UFC. He's he's not very great anywhere. Like. He can wrestle, but he's not known for it. Um, he likes to stand up and throw bombs, but he can kind of fade as the fight goes on. Um, Molina, on the other hand, he's kind of like a second coming of Brandon Moreno, in my opinion. He's got a really good chin, kind of like a skinny kid. He's getting older, though. Um, but, you know, the only red flag that stands out to me in this fight is that Zuma Duolov is probably a lot heavier than... Um, Molina during fight time. So if Zuma do all have once, he may be able to take El Jefe down and just lay on him, which would just be like a frustrating way to lose your money. Um, we, you know, we saw that happen in the Hadley fight, right? Yeah. And, you know, weight bullies at 125 kind of can dominate fights, but um, I just think the striking at range and stuff is pretty good. I think his, his ground game is pretty decent. I think we're going to see a third round KO. I think he starts slow, El Jefe, and he comes on late, so uh, I like that. 
All right, the next fight we have is Felice Her Herod versus Carolina Kolitsia. Kolitz, I can't say the name. Um, this is not going to be a good fight. <laughs> uh, I think we're just going to go Carolina by decision. What stands out to me is activity, and Felice is almost on a two year layoff. Recently, you know, isn't very active in these other years. There's a lot of. You know, those were fights a while ago, and she's gotten older. Um, and Carolina's side, yeah, she's on a fight, fight losing streak. Um, you know, she doesn't really do anything that great. Her striking is not that great. I think she's just got defensive jujitsu, um, and just looked for her to make it to a decision. Uh, not too much riding behind this fight. Maybe we'll just do the over two and a half just to parlay it with something because why the hell not? But, uh, um, again, rematches can always be different, so I wouldn't be surprised if Herod takes this, but, uh, I don't really care what happens. <laughs> Next fight we have is Alonzo Menafield versus Askar Mazarov. Um, this is gonna be a very interesting fight. Um, Askar really hasn't fought too many great fighters. He's fighting in Europe or in China and these different places. And uh, he's kind of fighting lower level competition. But he's actually doing some, you know, he, he has a pretty interesting style. He is just fireworks from the opening bell. He likes to come at people, he likes to swing. Um, you know, in the UFC, it really doesn't work that well. Um, people don't like to gas out and whatever, but when you're fighting cans, you're just going to run through them. Um, on Menafield side, he's powerful, um, but he doesn't really perform well against great competition. I think he's a former football player, partially why, kind of like Eric Anders. Um, he's not really great at anything. He gets tired after the first round, so we might be see uh, two dudes get exhausted. Um... Something that stands out to me in this fight, though, is if it goes to the ground, I think Menafield could just control the fight. Um, so, like, I want to pick the under one and a half rounds for this, but it's kind of scary because Menafield could just lay on him once they both get tired and it'd be too hard to finish the fight. Um, I mean, as of right now, I'm just going to go Astrov KO round one. He throws stuff like Paula Costa, where, like, you just walk into an exchange and he's just throwing everything. Also, his right leg kick is super damaging. Um, Menafield's pretty flat-footed. I think that leg kick could catch him off balance and, uh, you know, be an early investment in the first two minutes. Um, but yeah, not... I wouldn't bet a straight thing on this... The only things I would do, under one and a half, maybe submission, Alonzo or KO round one, or Astrov, KO round one. Probably find that at like plus 300, plus 350. Um, but yeah, um, it'd be an interesting fight to watch, especially if it's me a main card one. The next fight we have is Mike Trezano versus Lucas Almeida. Um, you know, what stands out to me in this fight is we're seeing Almeida, who is a similar person to Astrov we saw in the last fight, who um, bull rushes people, likes to put heavy pressure on people. Um, but, it, you know, he gets really tired after um, trying to go through all of this, whereas Trezano is very patient in his approach. The hard thing is Trezano never puts... You know, he never fully claims rounds. He never really um, puts the pressure on anyone else. He kind of does what he has to to survive to a decision. Um, so what I expect is I expect Lucas Almeida to come forward, um, control round one, get a little tired. Um, maybe Almeida will still win the first minute and a half, two minutes of the second round, and then Trezano will win round two in the last three minutes and then take over round three. Um, this might be a good live odds one to hit for Trezano when you're just seeing that first round happen. 
but uh Trezano by decision, but once again, um if he gets caught, it could be game over. Um but again with these new fighters in the UFC you just watch what you're betting with. Um I was gonna say over two and a half, but just you know, with Almeida he did come across there and go crazy. Um, you don't know for sure, but if you're going to pick Trezano, picking him by decision is not a bad idea. You can catch pretty good odds with that. All right, and for um, our next fight, we have Pollyanna Botello versus Karine Silva. Um, I'm not sure if it's Karina or Karine, but uh, oh, all right. And this one, you know, what I see is I see a grappler versus striker matchup. Um, one concern is that Patello is a little bit uh, lankier, might be a little bit easier to get to her feet, but Corrine's a pretty dense girl, she's strong, and recently she's like lost quite a bit of weight I saw from, I watched some of her earlier fights to some of her newer fights. She's actually, uh, uh, you know, leaned up a little bit, and she's a little bit stronger of a fighter, especially with that 125 pound limit, she'll be coming in at a good weight. Um, I just think she's going to be able to get this fight to the ground. She has a ton of submissions, but she has them against a lot of not great fighters. Um, so it's kind of hard to say if she will get the submission in the first one. I'm going to go ahead and say that she does just, just off that Cynthia Cavallo, um submission. But Batello might just be on the fence the whole fight, too, defending them takedowns. And, you know, we see when the chicks usually go to the fence, other than, like, the Holly home fight, I guess that didn't go Holly's way, that um, they can win a decision. I'm just going to say round two submission. I think Kareen will just be a little bit better, and um, not much writing on this one. Again, I wouldn't hit the over or under rounds on this one. Um, maybe in the week... Uh, you could just do a straight bet on Kareen, but mm, not too much interest in uh, for this from a betting perspective. All right, next fight we have the co-main event: uh, Dan Ide versus Ivalev. Wow, I, I like this main uh, co-main. The line's a little crazy. What do you think? Well, I think uh, Ige's definitely fought the tougher opponents thus far, and. Eve Love will obviously try to take this one to the ground and lay on him. But I think Ige's got good takedown defense. And Eve Love might tire himself off. Tire himself. And I like Ige, third round knockout. And I think if Ige... I think if Ige goes... Um, uh, if he goes, like... In the first round, he gets taken down, whatever, whatever, you know. I think he can, you know, maybe just gas out Ivalev a little bit. Um, and he's just going to have the better gas tank going to the next couple. His grappling defense is pretty good. I, he's been getting some hate from some people. Like, I love EA, man. He he comes to fight every time. And yeah, he, he's entertaining. He, he fought Emmett in his last fight, and Emmett's a massive featherweight. He cracked him in the second round, um, and he's got a lot of power for his size. Evilev, on the other hand, if you're going to take him, just take him by decision. Because I think, looking back at his fights, decision, 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 decision. I mean, in the one with Hakeem Dawadu, um, I went back and watched that one. And round three, he was just getting pieced up. Um, by uh, Dawadu. He, he got stood up, and, you know, if EJ's right hand hits you, or his left hook, I mean, you're gonna, you're gonna go down. Um, so I, I like the third round KO. Um, probably a performance of the night. Anything else for this one? I like it. Uh, just those Hawaiian dudes are tough. Oh, I was gonna say, too, Evil Left striking isn't that impressive. Like, he does the bare minimum on the feet to like continue the rounds and the point scoring. So uh, that's what you should expect from him. But yeah, on to the main event. 
All right, main event time. Um, we got Volkov versus Jarzinho, uh, Rosenstruck. Uh, tough fight to call, especially in these heavyweight fights, but uh, I'll let you make your call. Go ahead. Yeah, I like... This is a tough matchup. Yeah, it is a tough matchup to call, but uh, I'm leaning towards Rosenstrike by knockout. I think Volkov hasn't looked too impressive in his last couple fights, but, I mean, he doesn't have a, to worry about the takedown in this one. But I think Rosenstrike will we'll catch him at some point. Yeah, uh, I guess I kind of forgot it's a five-round fight, and... Uh, Sitting in there with uh, uh, Jarzinho could be troublesome, but I, I'm just not big on Jarzinho. I am leaning Volkov, but I'm gonna give you this pick because I messed up the Hooper Kolaris one last week. Um, I just think Volkov's got the range, and I think he can like do front kicks. And the thing that frustrates me so much about Jarzinho is he has no volume in his striking, and Something he does, too, is he'll wait until rounds four or five to actually get going with his striking because he doesn't want to gas out early. Um, So I'd expect, you know, if he does get a KO, it's going to be late, late. You know, wouldn't you agree with that? Yeah, I'm thinking, like, third round. No. Third round will do, but he he likes to fight real slow. And um, Volkov will just get his, like, um, teep kick going. Um, I mean, he's he's obviously just going to be way bigger. Um, and he's done pretty well against some smaller fighters lately. But both of these two are on kind of weird runs. Like, Augusta Sakai is not, like, the best of best wins. And Volkov has kind of beat Tyruba in bad fashion as well. So, um... Yeah, yeah, I mean, we, Rosen Strikes only lost to the top couple of guys, Nagano, Gone, and Blades. Yeah, I just get scared for a score card with Jarzinho. That's the only thing. Yeah, if it does go to the scorecard with full call, I'll probably win. But I'm hoping it does not go there. But I, I think if, if Jarzinho was to win this fight by decision, he'd have to knock down Volkov in, like, three different rounds. So, um... Maybe yeah, just I, hitting I the KO prop is worth it. Yeah, for sure. And maybe even uh, late KOs are going to be that um, better prop odds because he doesn't really have a ton of first-round knockouts, I don't believe, against high-level competition. But yeah, um, that's our main event pick. All right, that's our full card picks and predictions. Um, you know, comment down below if you got a disagreement, if you want to fucking fight us, you know what I mean? Uh, check out that Instagram to, you know, get those bets early, because we put those bets out as soon as we can find them great odds. Uh, anything else from you? Nope. Just Jarzinho. Our best bets video will be uh, Tuesday, maybe? Wednesday? Oh, I don't know if the full props probably won't be out until Thursday, so probably Thursday. You know what I mean? Because I don't think DK and them are sometimes late. Um, but yeah. No, uh, DraftKings is usually better putting, out, putting them out early, but FanDuel's usually a little bit later. I would, I would expect them to come out Wednesday, but we'll look around. All right, y'all. Peace. Peace.